It is time for my weekly instalment of talking about Nothing Involved FC and the transfer market. And right now, that is a really exciting subject. Uh, if you couldn't tell about how happy I am about that. I'm just going to talk a lot in this video, believe it or not, about what we've done. We've already made six signings, going to probably make a few more. We need to make a few more. Talk about how the squad's looking and how these new players might fit in, who we might sign still. I'm absolutely... And a bit of disbelief, quite frankly, about the fact we've made this transfer. Nico Williams joins Forrest from Liverpool for £17.5 million, pounds, apparently. I don't know the exact figure, but quite frankly, I don't care. That is unbelievable. How on earth do you lose Jed Spence, a really exciting up-and-coming right wing back who was unfortunately on loan for us he saw but certainly eventually going to join spurs he'll probably join them in a few years at this stage because he's taken that long we lose a player of his caliber we all absolutely loved him he loved it at forest quite clearly and yet we're replacing him with someone that is arguably as good as him and if not more useful because he can play on both sides he can play on the left comfortably and he's mates with brennan like Jed and Brennan already had a fantastic relationship. For them to sign a player that is also in a very good relationship with Brennan Johnson is a stroke of genius. It's genius, this transfer. I am honestly so excited for this. Like, we're going to have to sign a few players ultimately. We're going to have to sign like 10 players, really, this transfer window. It's a shame to lose quite a lot of the squad that got promoted. But unlike a few years ago when we signed 14 and all of them are crap. We're talking Harry Arter, Tyler Blackett, Luke Freeman. I, I can go on a lot longer. The difference is, even if we do end up signing a similar amount of players, we're signing quality. And Cooper is going out his way, according to various reports, to make sure that these players will bond and gel correctly. And that just little things like that will go a long way. And okay, we're signing a lot of players we have to is either do that or have you know terrible squad depth it's a case of needs most really and ultimately we're signing quality all these players we've signed look excellent and i'm so so excited to see how they do we're going to talk about the two signings we've made since last week and as i mentioned nico williams already being one of them but omar richards is another coming in from bayern munich how far have we come how far have we come? We're now signing players from Liverpool and Bayern Munich. Just casually. He made 17 appearances to Bayern Munich and unbelievably, you'll never believe this, he won the Bundesliga at Bayern Munich. I know that's rare. Before he joined Bayern Munich, he was at Reading. He was previously in Fulham's Youth Academy. So he's been about a bit. He's returning to England more mature than he would have been after playing for a club as big as Bayern are. And yeah, this is a real, real good signing. In terms of his looks, in terms of you know, his dreadlocks, and in terms of how he plays, he does appear quite similar to Jed Spence, but just on the left-hand side. Signed a four-year deal, and that's it's exactly the same for Nico Williams. to sign these guys down for the long haul, you know, and we're just showing our ambition. We're not just a club that want to, you know, go up for one season and just keep doing it over and over again, or just be up for one year and then. It, we don't go back up again for ages. We want to stay in this division and build our future in this division for the good. And it's very exciting. I love being in the Premier League. Cheers. It's excellent. Musunir Karte and Tyro Awunyi. They made their debuts against Coventry in pre-season. And I can't really comment too much about how they did. Because ultimately, the quality of the stream in that game was absolutely horrific. And also, it was 45 minutes, so they didn't really have enough time to prove themselves. They look pretty good, I suppose. I can't really comment. I mean, if you have a better idea, let me know. But I can comment on one of our new signings, Julian Bianco. I thought he looked the best of the bunch out of those new signings. He looked really, really composed and solid on the ball, scoring on his debut an excellent goal from basically the edge of the penalty area. And I'm really excited to see how Bianco is going to do, where he's going to play. Is he going to be the backup to Nico Williams? Is he going to be a backup centre-half? Is he going to be both? I have a feeling he'll be both. 
I think he probably ought to be more of a backup right back given the fact we've now got so many centre halves on display. Before we talk about some of the rumours in, I want to look at how the squad is shaping up. So I've drawn up this little diagram. Uh, I suppose you could say it's 3-5-2 the formation, but really I suppose it's 5-3-2. It depends whether you want to classify the wing backs as midfielders or defenders, but they're both essentially, aren't they? So you call it what you will. Ultimately, the squad is shaping up really, really nicely. It's going to look quite different from last season with only really Johnson, Yates, McKenna, Wall. And then you'd imagine the likes of Colback and Cook will get a fair amount of starts as well. So there's only really like four or five players that won promotion that are going to consistently be starting matches, which is really quite sad. But it's not like we're downgrading, we're upgrading, you know. You look at all these players that are coming in, Richards is better than Lowe. Nierkate is better than Figueredo. I won ye. It's better than Davis, only I'd absolutely love it if you were to bring in Keenan as well. That would be fantastic. Williams has potential to be better than Jed. And I think right now they're on par with each other. Some people are even saying he's better. Henderson is better than Samba, really. So it is really exciting. We're losing players that we all loved in Jed and Samba in particular. And yet we're replacing them with even better players. I think looking at every position though, Henderson and Jordan Smith being the only goalkeepers we have is not good enough. I wouldn't be confident in the slightest if Jordan Smith had to even come close to playing a Premier League football match. But the chances of you having to use your third choice goalkeeper is unlikely. But we definitely, definitely need someone else behind Dean Henderson. And this is why I am so shocked that we've had to move on both goalkeepers. I thought Horvath might go because he wanted to play regular football, but I am just so, I can't even really comprehend the fact that Bree Samba doesn't play for us anymore. It really is a shock and I'm happy about who we've got to replace him, but the fact that Samba isn't our goalie anymore just doesn't make sense to me. Center off, you know, we're looking really strong there now. McKenna near Carte, Wall, Cook, a cookie deserves to be respected by the way we cannot be giving any cook slander he deserves to start matches in the premier league he's been there and done it before you can say he's slow but he's an excellent defender i don't think he needs to prove himself anymore then we've also got younger players like panzer and mb so bianca can obviously play at center backs i'm looking pretty strong now when it comes to center backs full backs you know williams bianco larea i don't have a feeling larea won't be here really uh, and then, then when we look at left wing back Richards and yeah then we do need someone else Bianco can technically play there Yuwanu if he stays about is an option and maybe it would be worth keeping him around just for a bit of squad depth midfield though that's the issue we love Jack Colback we love Ryan Yates we love Kafu and Ahada in their own right but ultimately those two aren't going to be able to cut it really I think they'll be good squad players but I, I, they're not going to be able to start matches in the Premier League they're going to need to be replaced so arguably we need about two midfielders and an attacking midfielder because we've got Joe Lolly there who's not an out and out attacking midfielder essentially we need to replace Ghana and Zinkanagel at the very least and the difficulty with this really is if we're in the championship it would just be as simple as that replace those two but because we're in the Premier League it isn't just a simple case of bringing those two back it's also replacing the players that we already had and players that we still have um, in, in particularly Kafir and Ahada, Colback and Yates for me are staples you know particularly Yates they're fine, no problem at all. But Kefro and Ahada, you arguably need someone else to back those two up. When it comes to up front, we could definitely do with one more forward. I want a... Ah, one, ye. Ah, one, ye. Let's just call him Tyro, shall we? We've got Tyro up front. Johnson is, is a winger slash striker. He's both, but he's more of a striker, really, isn't he? Surridge. Do not disrespect Super Sam Surridge. I don't, I don't know whether you are, but like, if you are, don't. Sam, I have a great feeling about him. I think he's going to be great. He's never been in the Premier League before, but he's a brilliant forward. He deserves game time. He deserves to be respected. In the Championship, at the very least, he is one of the best finishers in front of goal. I'll fight you on that, okay? If you disagree. Yeah. Don't want to mess with me. 
But really, after that, with Lewis Graben not signing a new contract, which is very sad, but it's an end of an era for him. He wouldn't really have been good enough. Taylor's not really going to be able to cut it, is he? And is Nuno da Costa even allowed to be spoken about in this conversation? No. So, arguably, we've lost Keenan and Graben. We've only replaced one of them. We arguably do need to sign one more striker. The final thing we need to mention, and speaking of strikers, is the rumours in. One of the latest rumours is Shay Adams. I'm not hugely convinced by this. Like I keep saying though, I will take whoever the club thinks is right. And given the fact that we're not looking for a star striker, that's going to be our one year. Um, we need a third choice striker. Because in my opinion, it's quite simple. When it comes to out and out strikers, it's a one year. Surridge and then someone else. Che Adams has been rather inconsistent down the years. He's got pretty outlandish expectations when he signs for clubs. Obviously we want to we want to win the league but obviously it's, it's it's a lot to ask for. But ultimately I think as a third choice striker maybe he wouldn't be a bad guy. He's still young, he's still 25 and this is the crucial thing we've got to remember. If anyone's going to get the best out of a striker that struggled at previous clubs it's Steve Cooper. Sam Surridge struggled at Stoke and Bournemouth to a degree. We continue to be linked with Morgan Gibbs White. Harry Toffolo has gone rather quiet only. Maybe it wouldn't be a bad get for a bit of squad depth. Lewis O'Brien is a player that I'd definitely take, but that's gone rather quiet as well. Hopefully it does reignite, but we'll have to wait and see. Wayne Hennessy has gone rather quiet only. That's probably someone we do need to really get over the line because we need another goalkeeper, 100%. Uh, and also, the, the, one, the last player I want to talk about coming in potentially and with even being rumoured that we sign this guy on a pre-contract is Gustavo Scarpa from Palmeiras. Palmeiras? Palmeiras. I think that's how you say it. Attacking midfielder. What we need. He'll be available on a free transfer, a pre-contract agreement coming in in January potentially. 28 years of age, which is rather old compared to the ones we're normally signing. He's got 29 goals in 171 games in four years for the Brazilian first division side. Um, I'm not going to lie, never heard of him, so I can't comment. Even if I went on YouTube and scouted him, I don't know if that's accurate to uh, really judge whether he's good or not. But I think it's worth mentioning. We need a forward, we, we need an attacking midfielder, maybe he could be the solution. That is pretty much it for this latest transfer window. As the title suggests of this video, I'm really quite excited. I'm really excited. Less than four weeks until we play Premier League football. <sighs> Blimey. I'm going to be going to the two pre-season matches out of seven. These being against Notts County and Valencia. Both of those at Meadow Lane at the end of this month. I'm so excited to go to a game of football again and to watch Forest and to go to a different ground. I've never been to Meadow Lane, so it'll be good. Uh, and hopefully... We can come away with two wins. We've got a few more pre-season games to come as well. Barnsley, Burton, Union and Hertha Berlin. And that is it for this video, everyone. Thanks for watching. I'll see you very soon for another video on the channel. Probably uh, a Premier League video, actually. So, uh, yeah, look forward to that. I'll see you very soon.